assess range of motion of the spine. And so when you're assessing range of motion of the spine, we're going to look first at active range of motion to check for the patient's willingness to move and also available muscle power. We're going to look at passive range of motion by applying slight overpressure to each direction tested. And then we're going to look at um, contractile tissues by checking resistance for each direction that we look at. So we're going to start with cervical range of motion. And so I'm going to ask Jessie Ray just to bring her chin down to her chest. We're going to look at available flexion. And as we do this, I'm looking at how the movement is happening through the vertebral bodies, trying to stay just specific to the neck. And then when she's there, I'm going to give her slight overpressure. Any pain there? No. And then I'm going to have her come slightly out of that motion. And now don't let me move you forward. This is checking resisted now. We're looking at the contractile tissues. And relax. So for flexion, we're, that will help us decide if it's contractile or non-contractile tissues that are involved uh, or if there's any pain associated with any of those movements. When looking at extension, we're going to ask Jesse Ray just to look up towards the ceiling. And again, I'm looking for any abnormal vertebral movement, excessive or lack of movement and come on back up. With extension, I typically don't apply um, overpressure or resistance, typically because that can be fairly uncomfortable for the patient. For rotation and side bending, I'll have you move to uh, the edge of the bed here. So you can decide if you'd like to look at your patient from the front or from the back. Both can give you important information. So for side bending, I'll have Jessie Ray bring one ear towards her shoulder. Good. And I will apply a stabilizing force at the shoulder and then a slight overpressure for passive tissues. And then I'll have her come slightly out of that. Now don't let me push you further, further towards your shoulder. Good. And we'll do the same on the opposite side. Bring your ear down towards your shoulder here. Slight overpressure. And I'll have her come out of range slightly. And resist. Don't let me push you down. Good. And again, you're always comparing left to right when you're doing um, one side or the other. Go ahead and now rotate for rotation. Look over your right shoulder for me. And I typically will keep my hands on the shoulders to ensure that the patient doesn't involve some thoracic rotation. And so from here, we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to give her a little bit of overpressure. I'm putting two hands on the head, and then I'll have her come slightly out. Now, don't let me rotate you further to the right. Good. And we'll do the same thing to the left. Go ahead and look over your left shoulder. Good. I'll apply some overpressure, and I'll have her come slightly out of that motion. Don't let me push you further to the left. 